Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh All praises and glories due to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakwadash, for giving us this knowledge, especially in the times we're in, which is indeed a blessing because this knowledge will be the stability of our times. And that's pursuant to Isaiah 33 and 6. And when I say our times, you know, quoting that scripture, meaning the times that we're in now, which is about to get real, real critical, so to speak. Uh, in the Bible, it speaks about the time of Jacob's trouble. That's what we're fast approaching. When uh, the wicked elite of this society will make this electronic device known as the RFID CHIP make it mandatory for everyone to receive all that's left is for them to create a major uh, create a major chaos and then they can bring in their order. That goes back to the motto, Auto Ab Chaos, which is uh, Latin for order through chaos. You know, they want to bring in that chaos to justify the order. And the order is so-called New World Order. That's their enterprise. You know, you see the symbol on the, the back of the $1 bill with the pyramid with the all-seeing eye. There you go. That's their enterprise. And the Bible speaks about that. Job 5 and 12 says, as a matter of fact, let me get it real quick. Then we're going to our subject. And you know, Yahweh I said to watch as well as pray. Those are some of the things that we're watching. We're watching the, uh, the, uh, actions of the wicked elite okay uh, Job the book of Job 5 and 12 it says this he disappointed the devices of the crafty who's the crafty Esau Edom who is the he the heavenly father Yahweh through his son Yahweh Shai he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. So what is their enterprise? The so-called new world order. Matter of fact, when you look at the Latin words uh, on that symbol, for those of you that, are, that don't know, you're new to this channel, you're hearing this information for the first time, when you look at the Latin words, Anuit Coeptes, that's on the top of the pyramid, on the back of the $1 bill, Anuit Coeptes literally means he favors our enterprise with with success. He favors our enterprise with success. And what is the enterprise? Well, the Latin words on the bottom: novos ordo seclorium. Novos ordo seclorium is Latin for new order of the ages or new world order. Okay. Now all you have to do is Google the new world order and what it entails. One of the things of the new world order is to have everyone identified by an electronic tag and that is the RFID CHIP we got to talk like that so so our, our videos don't get taken down by the YouTube algorithm there's certain words that you say which uh, uh, ticks off the the uh, YouTube algorithm and you, your video gets flagged and then eventually it gets taken down by YouTube so we have to speak that way. Sometimes we have to speak in code to bypass the algorithm. Now that being said, um, I want to do a response, slight response to this video here. Uh, Y'all make serving the Lord look boring. This was a comment put up by uh, some individual who calls himself Yashimai. I think he's one of one. Of I think he's an Israelite from one of those other groups. He's certainly not from GMS, that's for sure. 
And um, he made that statement, y'all make serving the Lord look boring. I, I don't know what scripture is in the Bible where it says when you serve the Lord, make sure you make it look exciting. <laughs> and uh, what's wrong with being boring? You know, me, myself, I live a, a extremely boring life. My life is really learning this knowledge, learning this truth and teaching it. That's my life. And I love it, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> my life is very boring and I love it. All right. The same thing with Elder Pastor, the same thing with Elder Apostle Ramlab, the same thing with the elders in Connecticut. We live boring lives. Our life is to serve Yahweh Barshim Yahushai. That, that is our life. And there's no scripture that says, when you serve Yahweh Barshim Yahushai, make sure you make it real exciting. That's why all these other Israelite groups that don't understand what they're involved in, that's why they take on these gimmicks. You know, like the like the rapping and the uh, and the uh, extravagant Passovers and uh, you know they they do they do that stuff you know to make the truth look appealing to the world, exciting to the world. You know, but that but in the process they're not being sincere and honest. You know, anytime you have to use these cheap gimmicks. You're not being sincere and honest, okay? Uh, the scriptures speak about serving the Lord, serving the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, in sincerity, honesty, and truth. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and uh, the 13th verse, it says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Heavenly Father, which is the beginning of wisdom, by the way, and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So that is our life. That's what we that's that's what we strive to do. We had great millstone beginning fell the pastor on down. We fear Yahweh Shim Shai, and rightly so, and we try our best to the to our ability to keep the commandments, keep his commandments. Why? For this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole duty of man. This is life. Okay? As we read on, it says, For the heavenly Father shall bring every work into judgment. And we see that. Every work that's out here, whether it be good or evil, is going to be brought into judgment. Especially if it's evil. Eventually, Yahweh Bashim is going to judge it and destroy it if it's evil. Every work. Every evil work. For the Heavenly Father shall bring every work into judgment. We're living in a time of judgment, man. We're living in a time of judgment. With every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And I just said that. I didn't even, to be honest with you, I didn't even notice it was going to say that towards the end of the verse. I was just focusing on the first part of the verse. But that, you know, <laughs> with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. There you go. There you go, man. So this is life. So I didn't read anywhere in here where it says, and make sure when you when you fear the Heavenly Father and keep His commandments, make sure you keep it fresh and exciting. <laughs> All right? Which when you get into this knowledge, when you really get into this knowledge and this truth, it's really fresh and exciting. It's certainly not boring, but this individual here, uh, Yashemai, he, he's looking for entertainment. And many of our people... They want entertainment. That's what they want. They don't want the, the knowledge. They don't want the truth. They just want to be entertained. Let's go to the book of uh, Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. That's the truth. They just want to be entertained. When they get bored, when they get bored, hold on for a second. Okay, yeah. Um, Ezekiel, the... Uh, 33rd chapter. Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter, and we're going to go to the 30th verse. It says, Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, 
and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. Now here's the point. <laughs> and they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love. Yeah, flattery. That's why you got to watch these guys where that's real loose with the flattery. Okay, a lot of that flattery is definitely not sincere. Okay? But they will not do them, for with their mouth they show much love. But their heart goeth after their covetousness. Yeah, because in the book of James it says, as a matter of fact, let me get that real quick. James, it says, be ye doers of the word. James, the first chapter, and somewhere around the, uh, yeah, here it is right here. James 1 and 21, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word. Uh oh, receive with meekness. Uh, another word for meekness is lowliness. So you don't have to be all flashy and exciting in receiving this gospel. You receive it with meekness. The engrafted word, which is able to save your soul, save our souls from what? From the coming destruction, man. That's what. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your, se your own selves. So there you go. And that, well, many of our people, they're just hearers of the word. And they like to hear the word because it entertains them. But do they do it? Nope. That's why when you go back to Ezekiel 33 and uh, 31 again, and they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. What, what did James say? Be not hearers of the word only, but doers of the word. Like the old saying goes, actions speak louder than words. But they will not do them, for with their mouth they show much love. Yeah, flattery. But their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, and look, lo means look, thou, you, the teacher that's teaching them, out of Thou art unto them as a very lovely song. Now, what does a very lovely song do for you? It entertains you. You know, it entertains you. So we, the teachers, right, unto these people, right, that don't take the word of Yahweh Shemiashai seriously, we are unto them as a very lovely song, which is a symbol of what? Entertainment. So we're there to entertain them. We're there to amuse them. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that have a pleasant voice. Again, entertainment. And can play well on an, on an instrument. Again, entertainment. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. I guarantee you, man, this individual here, y'all make serving the Lord look boring. He's not doing the complete will of Yahweh Boshim Yahushai. Okay? And how do I know? By, by him making a statement like that. And then he goes on to say, these commandments ain't grievous. Come and party with me. Come and party with you. So that's what this truth is to him. One big party. Entertainment. These commandments are not, are not grievous. The commandments... The commandments that we, we are told to follow in this world is grievous. This world makes it grievous. It's not supposed to be grievous, but in this world, trying to, trying to uh, toe the line righteously in this world is grievous. Why? Because this, is, this world is given to the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So if, you, if you're an individual trying to do the right thing in this world, it becomes grievous unto you. Because this world is inherently wicked.
That's why the scriptures describe Yahweh Shai as a man of grief. Let's go to the book of Isaiah 53. Yahweh Shai also made, made a statement. He said, how, how, how I am straightened until my mission be accomplished. We're going to get that scripture next. Isaiah 53. Now the prophet Isaiah was speaking about Yahweh Shai. The, the individual he's talking about. Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, the individual he's talking about is Yahweh Shai. And that was confirmed by the uh, Israelite that lived in Ethiopia. He was reading a passage from Isaiah, what would become Isaiah 53. And he asked Philip, which the Holy Spirit had told Philip to go next to him and teach him. He was sitting in his chariot, the Israelite from Ethiopia. He was a eunuch. He asked Philip, which Philip was one of the disciples, the original disciples, which became apostles of Yahweh Shai. He asked Philip, who is this guy talking about? Who is Isaiah talking about? And uh, Philip told him it was Yahweh Shai. And from there, he used that, that passage that would become Isaiah 53. He used that passage to teach of Yahweh Shai, to teach about Yahweh Shai, to, uh, to uh, uh, witness to him, Yahweh Shai, the Israelite from Ethiopia. So that's that that was the confirmation that Isaiah 53 is talking about Yahweh Shai. So let's read the, the passage from it, which says that Yahweh Shai was a man of grief, a man of sorrow. Uh, it is right here. I'll just go right to the point because I don't want to do too much expl explaining. Isaiah 53 and 3, he is despised. That was our Lord. Our Lord was more despised than he was loved and rejected of men. Uh, Yahweh himself made a statement. The son of man must be, must be rejected. Matter of fact, let me see if I can. Rejected by this generation. I know, by this generation. And guess what? This is the same generation that Yahweh Shai was talking about more than 2,000 years ago. This, we're in the same generation now. All right. Must be rejected. Be rejected. Here it is right here. Now this links up with Isaiah 53, right? Mark the 8th chapter. And the 31st verse, and he began to teach them that the son of man, who's the he? Yahweh Shai. The son of man, he's talking about himself. Which son of man, uh, uh, that's in the Hebrew is Bonadama, which means son of the ground. Son of the ground. Okay? Bonadama. That the son of man must suffer many things. So, you you in this ministry, you're in this truth, you, you're living a life of suffering. All right? You're not living an exciting party down life like that dude Yashimai said, come and party with me. He ain't in the truth, man. He, he probably couldn't spell the word truth. <laughs> and he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things. Now, remember what Yahweh Shai said. He said, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they shall persecute you. So really, in this knowledge and this truth, you live a life of suffering. But it's through the suffering that we're purified, Hebrews 2 and 10. That the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected, again, that lines up with Isaiah 53, and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests. And they're the ones that conspired to kill him. Eventually, he was killed. He was put on the cross. All right, he was sacrificed on the cross. And it, it was the, the, the elders and the chief priests that gave him up. All right? be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. That's exactly what happened. So this is why you go back to Isaiah 53 and 3. He is despised and rejected of men. Now you understand what that means. A man of sorrows. So yeah, we, yeah, we live a boring life. We're supposed to. <laughs> we, 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 uh, our life is, is dedicated to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, we're going to live an exciting life in the kingdom. 
All right. In the book of Micah 2 and 10, it says, Arise and depart, for this is not our rest. So the, the one mentality we have is to see this place be, be destroyed. Then we can live an exciting life in the kingdom. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Well, those of us that uh, in this knowledge, this truth, we we esteem Yahweh Shai highly, okay? We esteem him highly because we understand the knowledge, we understand the truth through Yahweh Shai. That was a gift given to us from the Father, Yahweh. All right? Let's read on. It says, Surely he have borne our griefs. Surely he have borne our griefs. He took on our sins, man. Yahweh Shai took on our sins. That's why he sacrificed himself on the cross. Beginning, you know, took on the sins of the elect. Beginning with the elect of the nation of Israel. Surely he have borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of the heavenly father and afflicted. Yeah, when he was on the cross. All that pain that, that, that he went through. I always think of about the three hour window of pain that he that he endured, that Yahweh Shai endured, that excruciating pain. He did that for us, for us Israelites, beginning with himself. It tells you that in the book of Hebrews, the seventh chapter. But that's another video for another time. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and hit, and with his stripes we are healed. Another scripture that comes to mind is uh, Lamentations. Now this guy, Yashemai, said we make, we, uh, y'all make serving the Lord look boring. <laughs> Which is a real dumb statement. Especially if you know the truth. If you go in the book of Lamentations, the third chapter, what does it say there? By the way, the word Lamentations, lament means to what? Cry. Alright? Cry, right? So, Check this out. Lamentations, the third chapter, just came to me. Lamentations, the third chapter. And uh, I'll start the 24th verse. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. That's why we call ourselves what? The hopeful elect. What is our main hope? Well, that we will be delivered by Yahweh Shai when he comes to destroy this society. When he comes to destroy Edo. Um, Edo. <laughs> When it comes to destroy Esau's Esau's society, Esau's kingdom, our main hope is that we'll be delivered, right? We'll enter into them chariots, the so-called UFOs, uh, pursuant to Isaiah 26 and 20. Uh, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him. So we're waiting for him. Right? That's that's exactly what we're doing. We're waiting for Yahweh Barshim Yahshai. There's another scripture. Wait ye upon me until I rise up to the prey, which the Heavenly Father is doing that right now. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. That's us. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. So that's us. That's us. We, live a, we live a nice, <laughs> well, not a nice, but we live a quiet life. Some in this, people in this world will call it boring. People like Yashabai say, you, 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 you boring, man. Because we live a quiet life, or we try to. You know, we have a simple routine. Oh, did not the scripture describe Yahweh Shah as being an austere man? Yes, it did. Let's look up the word austere. Let's see if, if austere means exciting. <laughs> it is. Austere. Now, before I read the definition, and I'm going to come back to Lamentations. Before I read the definition, let me show you that our Lord was an austere man. It is right here. And this was a parable that Yahweh taught. Luke 19 and 22. And he said unto him, 
clearly you see these words are written in red so these Yahweh actually said these words and he said unto him out of thine own mouth will I judge thee thou wicked servant thou knewest that I was an austere man taken up that I laid not down and reaping that I did not sow which in reality he did lay it down and, and uh, he did sow it and he did lay it down all right Thou knewest that I was an austere man. That's the description of our Lord, an austere man. Now, what does the word austere mean? Austere. Give this some volume here. Bear with me for a minute. There we go. Austere. It says severe or strict in manner that, that that don't it's that don't sound exciting to me severe or strict in manner attitude or appearance so an, an austere man is not a party guy especially when this austere man understands that he's in captivity he's in slavery what the hell do we have to party for this guy talking about come and party with me that's why the scriptures say the heart, the heart of the wise is in what? The house of mourning. That's that that dude that made that statement. He's not wise at all. Okay. Severe or strict in manner, attitude or appearance. That's the lifestyle we live. Those of us that know and understand this truth, that is, we live a lifestyle of, of, of a strict, a strict lifestyle. Okay. Uh, strict in manner, attitude, or appearance. Oh, uh, of living conditions or way of life, having no comforts. Well, we have some comforts. All right, I, I won't say that we have no comforts. No, we have some comforts, but very little. We live what is called a minimalist lifestyle. Look that term up. A mil minimalist lifestyle, right? Having no comforts. Or luxuries, luxuries, <laughs> I believe in luxuries, inside joke, uh, harsh or ascetic, okay, we, we do have some luxuries, having an extremely plain, and there it is, that's probably the best definition for this word, having an extremely plain and simple style, or appearance unadorned even when I when I so-called dress up I don't feel right man I don't feel right now before I came into knowledge the truth I was the guy who used to want to dress up every day you know matching this and matching that you know you you buy um what you call a designer clothing and shit it's all bullshit man who you trying to impress you know what, the world? The world ain't, ain't worth impressing. These people out here ain't worth impressing. <laughs> if anything, I'm trying to impress the how about Shimei Shai, man. That's that's who I want to impress. I want to I don't want to impress the people of the world. The majority of the people of this world are gonna they're gonna die any goddamn way. But there you go, man. There you go. Austere. So there's nothing wrong with being boring, serving the Lord. All right, Lamentations, the third chapter, the 25th verse. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the, the salvation of the Lord. And that's exactly what we're doing. We, we're quietly waiting for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. This is a yoke. And the reason why it's a yoke, because we're living in a world of wickedness. We're trying to do the righteous thing in a world of wickedness, where it's so easy to become wicked. We're trying to toe that line. Okay? Towing that line. All right? It's like living on a, a, a tightrope. You know, one of my favorite songs from uh, that group Steely, uh, that group Steel Pulse, not Steely, not Steely Dan, Steel Pulse. All right? There's a song uh, that the group Steel Pulse did, uh, Walking on a Tightrope. 
walking on a tightrope. Okay? And that's pretty much us. We're walking on a tightrope. Being in this world, living in this world. In the book of James, matter of fact, let me add to that. In the book of James, uh, it says to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. Let me let me show you that. Hence the reason why we we walk in the tightrope, living in this world. James, the first chapter, and uh, the twenty seventh verse, the last verse. Pure religion, which is servitude, freskaya in the Hebrew means servitude, and undefiled, undefiled, pure religion and undefiled. That's the, pretty much that's our ministry, right? Pure religion, pure service, and undefiled before the Heavenly Father is this, to visit the fatherless. How do you do that? Who's the fatherless, by the way? The, uh, these Israelites out here. Many of, them, many of them don't even have a father. That right there is a clue letting you know who we are, our, our nationality, that we're the Israelites. Many of the Israelite men don't even have a father, grew up without a father, don't even know their father. To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. Again, the widows is a is a symbol or, or a allegory for Israelites, Israelite men, because we've been divorced from the father, the heavenly father, that is. So we're like a widow, okay? So through this knowledge, through this truth, we're married back to the heavenly father and his only begotten son. So we're not widows anymore. And the word married means join to me. All right? Join to me. All right? So, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. Right? In their affliction. Our people are being afflicted out here by the wicked. And to, here's the point. And to keep himself unspotted from the world. See? So that's our main mission. So that's like walking. Keep ourselves unspotted from the world. That's, that's like walking on a tightrope, okay? Walking on a tightrope. Keep himself unspotted from the world, right? We don't, we, we don't want the spot of wickedness of this world. We don't want the taint, the, the taint and the smell of this world because it's wicked. Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. There's a scripture where it says, we know the whole world. Let me show you that. Life and wickedness. So our job is to keep ourselves on spot. And you do that through this knowledge. That's why you got to get the knowledge, right? You get the knowledge, then you get the understanding of the knowledge. And then by applying it, that is wisdom. What is wisdom? The application of knowledge with understanding equals wisdom. It is right here, 1 John 5 and 19. And we know that we are of the Heavenly Father and the whole world lieth in wickedness. There you go. So our mission is to keep ourselves unspotted from this world. So that's not an easy mission. Okay? So back to Lamentations, the third chapter, uh, 27 verse. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. So now you understand why it's a yoke. And look up the word yoke. Okay? Because we're trying to keep ourselves unspotted from this world. We're trying to keep ourselves unspotted from a world that lieth in wickedness. Think about that. Now it goes on to say, he sitteth alone and keepeth silence. So that sounds pretty boring, doesn't it? He sitteth alone and keep keepeth silence. Many of us, us brothers in the faith, we're loners, man. The only time we, we, uh, we're social is when we, we, we come into brothers like ourselves. You know, we come around brothers like ourselves, then we become social. But when we leave the brotherhood, right, when we go out there into the world and do what we got to do, we're loners, man. I know a lot of you brothers can I identify with that. You know, I know my I myself, pff, I'm a consummate loner. <laughs> you know, I always tell the story. My mother wanted to name me a lone, um, my mother wanted to name me Ranger. She wanted to give me the, the, the name Ranger because she told me this. Because her, her favorite show was the Lone Ranger. You know? So she wanted to name me Ranger. And my father stepped in and he said, nope, we're going to name 
name, uh, name him Joseph. I have that name. But she wanted to name me Ranger because her favorite show, she told me this, her favorite show was The Lone Ranger. So now I kind of understand why I'm like a consummate loner, man. The Lone Ranger. Yeah, that's me, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> the Lone Ranger. How about that? Lamentation, the third chapter, the 28th verse. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence. And by the way, it's a ranger is a soldier. And we're all soldiers in, 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 this, in this thing of ours, man. We're all soldiers to Yahweh Shimei Shai. Okay? And, and, and for, hey, a soldier lives a boring life. All right? So it's clear, Yashimai, who made that statement, it's clear he don't know what the hell he's talking about. He's just, he's just a, he's just an Israelite looking for, looking for entertainment. That's all. He's the kind of guy, eventually he gets bored of this thing and he, and he trickles back into the world. Lamentations 3 and 28. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence. Because he have borne it upon him. He is, we have taken on this knowledge. We have taken on this, this, this truth. We have taken on the mission. He putteth his mouth in the dust. If so be, there may be hope. Why do you think we call ourselves the hopeful elect? Nowhere, wait a minute. Nowhere in here do I read it's going to be exciting. Okay. So now let's get let's go to the video. Let's listen to a little bit of this video here. Back with another video. Gonna go into this brief lesson. And uh I've actually touched on this <clears throat> in a live stream earlier today. The live stream was entitled Um The Long Haired Demon and the Spirit of Mirth. But actually uh Apostle Gabar did a video. You know, dealing with this as well, uh, going into the provocation, you know, and then I said, you know what, there's actually a little bit of meat on the bone still left as I looked at this comment. It still piss, pisses me off. It pissed me off then. It's pissing me off now. And just want to dive into this a little bit and offer a little more further education, uh, edification, excuse me, a further, a little further edification. So all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. This lesson is going to be entitled Response. Y'all make serving the Lord look boring. Y'all make serving the Lord look boring. Okay. And and you know what? That's that's a that's a beautiful statement. All right, he thinks he's insulting us, Yashimai, but it's actually a beautiful statement. We make serving the Lord look boring. Good. Okay? <laughs> So you can see a post here that was made, I guess, on Twitter by this individual named Yashimai. And there was a video going around these, uh, I think it's the True the true Nation Israelite group. And they had a party or some type of celebration. And, the, you know, and you, you always see... Another misnomer, the True Nation. Because this dude ain't speaking no truth. This, this dude right here, Yashimai with these Israelites before they do something stupid they'll make a statement like as if it's you know that's that's the reason why they make these statements and put these posts up beforehand because they know that they're doing something that doesn't look you know that they know this feels are out of place so the spirit was already on the dude showing you that the shit was out of place but yet you'll make a statement and go ahead on and do it anyway so the brother Shapa of the 12 put up this post and it says so not partying in captivity Makes the Lord look boring, Jake out of out of his mind, you know. And this, and I would agree. So again, the tweet says, "Y'all made serving the Lord look boring. These commandments ain't grievous. Come and party with me." When the scripture says the commandments are not grievous, grievous didn't have didn't doesn't mean the, uh, boring. Grievous doesn't mean boring. If you keep the commandments, it's not supposed to be fun, right? And then, and then you see here further they say, uh, "Come party with me." Post feast of dedication. And the brother mentioned the word fun, right? If you look up the word fun, the etymology of the word in the uh, lat the Latin slash Italian, uh, fun is uh, 
divitimento. All right. Hold on, let me show you what I'm talking about. That's the beauty of knowing other languages. In this case, the uh, Latin slash Italian. If we go in the word, uh, translate the word, um, we're going to write the word fun here. There you go. Now the word, the word fun in Italian is divertimento. All right, you heard what he said, divertimento, divertimento, which literally means divert the mind. Divert the mind. So too much fun takes your mind, takes your mind off what it's supposed to be, what it's supposed to concentrate on. Too much fun distracts you. It's a distraction. Divertimento. It's a distraction. That is why when you go in the uh, book of uh, sorrow is better than laughter. Sorrow is better than fun. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. But see, the, 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 uh, the fool doesn't understand that. Ecclesiastes 7 and 2. It is better to go to the house of mourning. We're in the house of mourning right now. The, the, uh, this knowledge, this ministry, is really a, a ministry of mourning. This knowledge that we're in. I guess Yashimai hasn't figured that out. This is a, a ministry of mourning. There's a scripture in Joel where, where it says, Serve the Lord with fear and trembling, with mourning. We're in a penitent state. We're in a sorrowful state because we, we feel sorrow for the wickedness that we've done, not only in this life, but in our past life. We understand that. Plus, we're living in a world of wickedness. We're trying to do the righteous thing. Of course, we're going to be in a sorrowful mind state. What is this guy talking about? Come and party with me. That's his problem. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, partying. This is Ecclesiastes 7 and 2. For this is the end of all men. Again, it's written, he that increaseth. Matter of fact, we're in Ecclesiastes, right? We're going to come back to this. Let's go Ecclesiastes 1 and 18. What does that say there? Ecclesiastes 1 and 18. For in much wisdom is much grief. Ain't no fun in grief, right? You ain't partying when you're in the, when you're in the state of grief. So this lets me know this character here. Yashimai, he don't have much wisdom. That's just a dumb statement. But then and then again, it was a beautiful statement because that's he's hey, he's confirming that we're in the right spirit. We had great millstone by him making that. He thinks he's insulting us, but it's actually a compliment. But at the same time, it's a stupid statement. It, it reveals his lack of wisdom. <laughs> wow. Ecclesiastes 1 and 18. For in much wisdom is much grief. So the deeper you get into this knowledge, the deeper you get into this truth, the more grief that 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 you that you have. Remember, Yahweh was a man of grief. Remember, we read that, and he Yahweh was extremely wise. He had the most wisdom ever, Yahweh, and he was in a state of what? He was in a state of grief. Matter of fact, I said I was going to get that scripture. Uh, how am I straightened? How am I straightened? Man, I hope I find it. There it is. Oh, see. Till it be accomplished. Till it be accomplished. There it is. The book of Luke 12 and 50. These are the words of Yahweh Shah. He said, but I have a baptism to be baptized with. That's the same baptism we have. Being called into this knowledge and this truth. Being called into this ministry. That's Yahweh Shah's baptism, right? But I have a baptism to be baptized with. That's this knowledge, this truth, 
and how I am and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? So was Yahweh having a good time? Was 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 Yahweh a good time boy? <laughs> I don't think so. Let's look at that word straightened. Let's let's get the definition for the word straightened. Straightened. Oh, characterized by poverty. Well, Yahweh was poor. There's a scripture where it says he 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 was rich. He became poor. Yeah, um, the apostle Paul said it. He became though he was rich. The apostle Paul said though he was rich, he became poor for your sakes. The apostle Paul said that about Yahweh Shai. Uh, restricted in range or scope, straightened. Okay. Uh. What does straightened mean in the Bible? To hem in. He was hemmed in, man. Confined. Archaic. Which I know the word archaic means old. So he, he lived a, a, a he lived an ancient lifestyle. His lifestyle was very well. He was an austere man. We live an ancient lifestyle. There's a scripture in Jeremiah where it says, As for the old paths, the old ways. That's us. We live a very simple lifestyle, man. Like I said, man, my lifestyle is ultra boring. And I love it. That's the way I want to be. To hem in, confine, archaic. To restrict in freedom or scope. There you go. Hamper. To, sub to subject to distress, privation, or deficiency. Come on, man. This guy talking about come and party with me. No, 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 thank you, man. That's a that's an offer that I decline. I decline your offer, all right? I want to party with you. Uh confine, hamper. There you go, man. You get it. You get the you get the understanding. So Yahweh Shai was straightened until it be accomplished. And Yahweh Shai did accomplish the mission. That's why on the cross, the last statement he made, he said, it is finished. I mean, I've done my, my job. I've done my mission. And now we're waiting for him to come back and finish the mission. Uh, so back to Ecclesiastes 1 and 18 again. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. So no, you're not, you're not going to have a good time. All right. You're not going to have a good time. Ecclesiastes 7 and 2. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men. And the living will lay it to his heart. Who is the living? Us that have this knowledge, this truth. We understand that. We understand it's better to go into the house of mourning. Than the house of feasting, partying. <laughs> Come and party with me. Sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. And that's true. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. The house of mirth, as in partying. The heart of fools. So this guy has a heart of a fool. No wonder he has those dark shades on. His soul is dark. Let's get back to the video. With me. Post feast of dedication vlog day seven which these israelites we told you before they're looking for something fun they're looking for gimmicks so let's just first we'll look at the word boring That's wait a minute it said post feast what did it say look at that post feast of dedication the house of what what we read here the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning but the heart of fools is in the house the house of mirth. There it is right here. Uh, it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. <laughs> so he just said post feast of dedication. And then when you watch this video, they basically they they're dancing like you know dance monkey dance. You know, like the old saying goes, dance monkey dance. There you go. <laughs> Which these Israelites, we told you before, they're looking for something fun. They're looking for gimmicks. 
Exactly. So let's just first we'll look at the word boring. That's that's how, and you know the groups that have the the most Israelites flocking to them, those are the groups with the most gimmicks. No, Great Millstone, we're not into gimmicks. Our main thing is this knowledge, this truth, and the mastery of it. Let me say that again. Great Millstone, our main thing is this knowledge, this truth, and the mastery of it. There's a scripture where it says, strive for the masteries. That's us. Now, when you're striving, it ain't going to be fun. It ain't going to be fun when you're striving. For mastery of anything, it ain't going to be fun. Okay? We're striving for the masteries over here. And this guy's talking about partying, come and party with me. No, thank you. We decline. I just decided to look it up. Boring. It says not interesting, tedious. So what we do... May and this, this truth is, is uber interesting. Are you kidding me? The word look not interesting and tedious. As many lessons as keep coming out, as all the edification is pouring out and, and, and you know people are learning and the Israelites are waking up. They're saying that it looks disinteresting. The real meaning of boring, causing weariness and restlessness through lack of interest. Hmm. And this this truth is anything but boring, man. This truth is ultra exciting. This is the most exciting thing that you can ever do, this knowledge, this truth. Yeah, how should I describe it? as living water living water is exciting living, living water is vibrant okay it is right here the book of John 4 and 10 Yahweh I answered and said unto her if thou know if thou knewest the gift of the heavenly father and who it is that saith to thee give me to drink thou wouldest have asked of him and he would have given thee living water so living water is an analogy for this knowledge this truth let's go to psalms another scripture comes to mind psalms the first chapter so this truth is not boring it's 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 the most exciting thing on this planet earth psalm one and one blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night, like us. We're an example of that. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, living water, that bringeth forth fruit in his season, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. What is that? His works? Number one, the works that he does being in this knowledge is truth. And also other individuals bringing them into the ministry. That's, that would be his fruit. Okay? That's what this knowledge does for you. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. There you go. So this thing, this thing of ours is, is certainly not boring. Lack of interest. Hmm. So to them, serving the Lord and sitting your ass down and not being out there partying like you used to do when you was in the world, to them, that's boring. And that's exactly what you do. You said sitting your ass down, right? Well, we just read that in Lamentations, did we, did we not? He sitteth down. This thing was never meant to be exciting, even though the knowledge is exciting, but the way we keep it is very simple and plain, austere. Nothing wrong with that, man. Our Lord was an austere man. We live an austere lifestyle, man. Best best lifestyle to live in this wicked world, this wicked society. Lamentations 3, he said he sitteth down, right? Well, it is right here. Lamentations 3 and 27, it is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him. And like I said, we alone is in this thing of ours. Bro, to them, that's boring. And as one brother said, that bored, being boring will keep you alive. Having fun will get you killed. That, that's true. That's true. You know. You're trying to get your kicks, you know. <laughs> it 
It says here, the meaning of boring is causing weariness and restlessness through lack of interest. We, we did read that. Here it says from dictionary.com, boring definition, causing or marked by boredom, dull and uninteresting, tiresome. And so you call him the word that ain't that ain't the truth. <laughs> the Lord in the true sense, because we got the hundred percent truth over here, baby. That's right. You call that boring? It's because you want to be entertained. That's why you want to exactly. hear it. You're of the world. Yeah, he's a mindless twit. <laughs> he's a he's a mindless twit that wants to be entertained. Yashimai. That's what he is. He had no sense. If he had any sense, he wouldn't have made that statement. Let's read it now. And we told you, brothers and sisters, that these Israelites are here for entertainment. Yep. Whenever you're That's complaining right. about something being boring, what's the opposite of boring? Fun. You want to have fun or entertaining. Something entertaining. The thing about fun is it diverts your mind. Divertimento. See? In the Italian, divertimento. Your mind is diverted. Too much fun. Distraction. The Apostle Paul said to attend, attend upon the Lord without distraction that's what that's what the apostle paul said let me show you without distraction we don't need no distraction man we're trying to focus over here this guy talking about come and party with me no thank you first corinthians 7 to 35 and this i speak for your own profit for your own profit right not that I may cast a snare upon you, a trap, but for that which is calmly, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Let me read that again. And that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. Too much fun is a distraction. Divertimento. Let's get back to the video fun you want to have fun or entertaining fun, something entertaining that's what you want to see so what do you do at the risk of hey you, you want to have some fun that hey take up some white lines white lines <laughs> it was that grand uh grandmaster flash white lines fun baby get high up baby fun baby and he's talking about what he was talking about cocaine that's what he was talking about that's for them guys who want to have fun, you know? <laughs> Your own salvation, you would throw a party and look like damn fools and make the word of the <laughs> Lord look like it's some type of, you know, frolicky, uh, yeah. jokey smurf type shit. Well, Bacchus, they, 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 they worshiping, that's the worship of Bacchus. And them, them parties and that reveling and all that. That has to do with the worship of Bacchus. Bacchus. Bacchus definition. There you go. Bacchus, the Greek god of wine, called also Dionysus. And there's an old saying, wine, women, and song. Let me see how's it go. Wine, women, and song. Because you know when you're partying, you know you got to have some wine. Wine, women, and song. There you go. Entertainment, man. Wine, women, and song. Oh, I didn't know Loretta Lynn did it. Oh, look at this. Wine, women, and song. Oh, you, you're learning a lot today. Barack and Thay, how about Shimmy Shai? Wine, women, and song is a, is a hendiatrist. That means uh, one idea in three words, hendiatrist. You look the word up. That endorses hedonistic lifestyles or behaviors. That's what, hey, hold up, man. That's what this dude is endorsing. He's endorsing a heathen, hedonist, heathen, hedonistic lifestyle. Come and party with me. No, thank you, my man. No, thank you. Uh, wine, women, and song, and that's what you saw at at, at that that on, in this video. You saw these dudes; they dancing. The women were dancing. You know, totally out of order. That was hedonism, man. Hedonism. These guys ain't Israelites; they're hedonists. <laughs> uh, look up the word he hedonist. All right, 
uh, that endorses hedonistic lifestyles or behaviors. A, a more modern form of the idea is often expressed as sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah, a phrase popularized by British singer Ian Dury in his song of the same title. There you go, man. Wine, women, and song. Come and party with me. Yeah. Shit. You do that at the risk of your own salvation just so other people will say, ooh, they having fun. Look at them having fun. Yeah, he's a hedonist. Let's get the definition of hedonist. This is what we do around here. And if you're bored, then don't watch my videos. Hedonist. Or hedonistic. Hedonism. Let's read that. Hedonism. Hedonism. The pursuit of pleasure. Central self-indulgence. Now tell me that ain't that dude, man. Tell me that ain't this guy right here. This dude is not an Israelite. He's a hedonist. <laughs> Come and party with me. Okay, my man. Fun. Look at them having fun. <laughs> fun. Which really shows, like I said in the past video, I did another video called Many of these Hebrew Israelites are not born again, and that's all that it is. We can see that. It's easy to see you Jakes are not born again. That's right. This is Ezekiel 33 and 30. It says, Also thou son of man. Yeah, so I read that scripture. So I'm going to leave it there. It's past an hour. I really didn't intend for this video to go so long, but you know I was having fun. You know, I was having a lot of fun in in my boring video. <laughs> anyway, it's on to the next one. Shalom to the Lord's elect.